Hi, and welcome to your online wedding planning basics with your wedding expert, Sean Vaughn. As everyone knows, when planning a wedding, it can become very stressful and frustrating when you don't know exactly where to start. So right here with the wedding planning basics to start, I want to make sure that I cover three important beginning steps that every bridal couple must take. Number one, we're going to discuss determining your style of wedding. Number two, we're going to discuss determining the number of guests. And the dreaded number three, determining your budget. When determining your style of wedding, this is where you want to make the decision of whether or not you want a formal or an informal wedding. When you talk about a formal wedding, this is a traditional wedding, a more traditional wedding. And this type of wedding is generally held in like a church or a synagogue uh, with a traditional ceremony. Um, the ceremony is normally officiated by a member of the clergy, a minister, a rabbi, and you have your traditional bridal attendance, you have your traditional wedding music, and determining on the type of religious ceremony you're having, you're going to have your traditional rituals. Now when you talk of an informal style wedding, this is going against the grain, your non-traditional wedding. So with an informal wedding, there's no specific setting. You can have it on a ranch on the beach or even skydiving in the air and this has actually been done so this is more of an informal type wedding the officiant can be a member of the clergy but it can also be a friend or a relative someone who has completed the course to be able to perform weddings and then you want to make sure that you focus on the date and time because this comes into play with where you want to have your wedding whether it be formal or informal so what you want to do is make sure that you're open for dates if you have your heart set on a specific place and times now step two is determining the number of guests that you want to have invited to your wedding ceremony now the number of guests plays an important role when it comes to determining the style of wedding and where you actually want to have your wedding um, what I suggest every bridal couple should do is that you each should complete your own separate guest list of friends and family. And I consider this your first draft. And after you've completed your first draft, then you want to review that guest list and look at all of the friends and family that you have. And if you haven't spoken with someone in the past year, scratch them off, take them off. The, you want to keep things in perspective. So once you've reviewed that and you've scratched off those people, then you look at your, your guest list one more time and then you narrow it down to the people that you absolutely must have at your wedding day. And then you combine those two guest lists to finalize the number of guests that you will have attending. What you always want to remember is that the more guests that you invite, the more your wedding is going to cost. Okay, step three. Here's the kicker. Determining the budget. What you always want to do so there's no confusion during the process of your wedding day because you want to stay as stress-free as possible. Determine at the beginning who is actually going to pay for your wedding. Is it going to be the bride's parents? Is it both sets of parents? Is the couple just going to pay? Or is it a combination of, of all three? And once you've determined who's paying, then you can decide on how much to budget for. Because now that you have the people who are going to actually pay for the wedding, you want to consult with them to see what's not too much or if what you had in mind for a budget is exactly what they would have in mind for a budget. And then once you have conversed with all of the, wed the, the parties who are going to be partaking in paying for the wedding, then you want to actually track your wedding expenses. And I have a great... Uh, budget form that's good for uh, bridal couples to use throughout the wedding to keep them on track with exactly how much they're spending and I'll be showing that to you in just a second so when you determine the budget you want to make sure that you're able to communicate with all of those who are going to be actually contributing to your wedding day as far as finances are concerned and this can become a little tricky because sometimes the ideas that we have for our weddings can be a little bit more elaborate than what our budget will allow for. So you always want to make sure that you get this taken care of at the beginning because I promise you it will allow for a stress-free wedding planning process. Okay, here is a simple wedding budget form I like to give all of my bridal clients when they're starting their wedding planning process. Uh, for the sake of this training, this bride 
total budget is ten thousand dollars now granted ten thousand dollars is not going to take you a long way in today's wedding society but just for the training this training purpose we're going to use ten thousand dollars as you see for the reception the reception is normally fifty percent of your total budget and you can generally expect that with any budget that you have so on a ten thousand dollar total budget what we have for the reception is actually five thousand dollars and you can see all of the costs that can be accumulated with that five thousand dollars the site fee catering costs bar and beverage your wedding cake transportation from ceremony to the reception is also included in that reception fee when you look at flowers you have 10% of your wedding budget which is a thousand dollars and you have to take into consideration every aspect of the wedding day that will need to include flowers and that's your ceremony flowers your bridal bouquet your wedding party flowers and your reception centerpieces so all of this and even if you have certain decorations that you want to include with your wedding all of this is going to be included in that 10% for your flower allotment now for music again is 10 percent of your total wedding budget that's a thousand dollars and then that's your music for the ceremony and reception now what i do want to point out is that you can also borrow from different sections say you don't want to spend a thousand dollars on music you have friends and family who's going to play at the reception uh, at the ceremony and then you have a dj who's only charging you a few hundred dollars for the reception so you probably will not use all of that thousand dollars for your music allotment so you take your extra from that ten percent for your music and you put that somewhere else where you may need it whether it be with your flowers or with your reception now when you look at the wedding attire it too is also ten percent of your total budget and that's including your dress your headpiece your jewelry your shoes hair and makeup and just in case the groom's attire is included in here is for the groom ensemble as well. Now looking at photography, again photography is 10% of your total wedding budget and that's going to include your photography and videography. Now if you have any extra money from any of these other categories, this is where you probably want to put it depending on your budget. So with photography and videography, you're going to spend that thousand off a photographer, a videographer, and your engagement portraits if you are going to have engage, engagement portraits. Now if you look down at the stationery, that is only 4% of your total budget. So that's $400 that you're going to spend on invitations. Now granted $400 doesn't seem like a lot for, for stationery because this is what you have to look at, at as far as what your stationery is going to include. That's your invitations and your inserts, your announcements, your thank you notes. You also want to include postage in there and your programs for the ceremony. So again, if you have extra money somewhere else and you need to kind of move it around, you may want to look at some of these key areas and stationery is going to be a big key area. Now you have extras and that is at least 6% of your total budget so that's $600 and this is a good place where if you don't use this entire allotment for your extras this is a good place to kind of move around to the other areas under your extras it has bridesmaids luncheon now some people do decide to have their bridesmaids luncheon and some others do not so if you don't then that's some extra money that you can move towards other places your attendance gifts your wedding gift your wedding favors the wedding rings can possibly be included in, in this extras if that is going to be included in your wedding budget your rehearsal dinner the marriage license and the officiant fee now I do want to remind you depending on who's taking care of the wedding bills some of this may not be included in what they're taking care of say you may want to take care of something uh, out, outside of this like your your wedding gown or the wedding rings may not be included so this is giving you some free m money to move around to other parts that you may really need it a little bit more I hope this budget form was very helpful for you it's very helpful for all of my bridal clients it does help them to stay on track with what they are spending throughout their six months to a year planning process and you will be able to download this on the link be located below uh, this presentation thank you this is the beginning of our wedding basic planning series 
and check back when we will talk about some more wedding planning issues.